dear foodie friends, and welcome to Kitchen Chat. I'm your host, Margaret McSweeney, and I'm so excited to be in the beautiful Viking and La Cornue showroom at the Merchandise Mart with my co-host, brand ambassador of Viking, Chef Jamie Larita. Hey guys, it's nice to be back. Yes, and we are thrilled to welcome the winningest man in barbecue, Chef Myron Mixon himself, into Kitchen Chat. It's welcome. good to be here with you. Myron oh. Mixon, the winningest, I can't even say, say that three times fast, the winningest, how do you say it? We had it? to invent that uh, when we wrote our first cookbook, the winningest, and I went and looked at that time, and it was not a word, now you can Google it, and it is a word. It's your word. You created a word. He owns that word. I own so, that word, so anybody out there is using that in any form, quit it. Listen, <laughs> if we find out that you're using his word, we're going to tell you. Right? This man's wearing a Super Bowl ring. He's yes. winning everything. He won us over here today. He is the most winningest man in the world, not you. Done a great job That's right there. We're winning this right there. Absolutely. It wasn't a threat. It was a promise. <laughs> and speaking about that Super Bowl of barbecue ring, can we show that to the viewers? This is just beautiful. And when did you win that? And how do you win a barbecue competition? The first time we won, and this is from uh, 2001, uh, was the first year. 2004, we won our second. Uh, then 2007. And then we won our fourth in 2016. Wow. You've great. got some fans out there, I gotta tell you. My brother in law, Albert Manzo, um, loves you, and he doesn't love anybody. But when he, <laughs> when he found out that I was gonna be uh, with you here today, he was like, oh my God, tell him I love him so much. He loves to barbecue and smoke, and you are a huge inspiration to him and many people. Well, tell him I love him right now. Tell us about, you know, what's new, what's happening, what's going on? Uh, the newest thing right now for us is we got our restaurant in Alexandria, Virginia, Myron Mix and Pitmaster Barbecue. We had our one year um, anniversary in January. It's doing really great. Uh, right there in downtown uh, Old Town, right there in Alexandria. Uh, next thing we got going on, matter of fact, this weekend we are here at the Windy City Smokeout. We're going to be doing our uh, barbecue classes there on Saturday morning, starting at 10 o'clock, VIP classes. My section of it will be doing the pork butts and the whole chickens. We'll be doing the injections for the uh, pork butts and also the injections we use for our chickens. So what do you inject it's, the pork butt Well, with? the thing is, I mean, you, especially, and it's all designed, my classes are designed about around competitions. You always want an edge. But with that being said, you know, you want to turn out the best barbecue possibly can. And it doesn't necessarily mean you got to be a competitor to do that. Right. The recipes are the same, whether you're feeding judges, feeding customers in your restaurant, off your food truck, or friends and family. And the recipes that we'll be doing tomorrow or Saturday morning when we do those are the same recipes I use at my restaurant that I use when I'm winning the world championship or if I'm cooking for friends and family. I never change or deviate. But um, we got some good recipes. We got some that's going to have peach cider in it. We got some that's got apple juice. We're going to have a uh, butter injection for the chicken. So it's going to be pretty cool. Wow, that's amazing. So in our neck of the woods here in Chicago, barbecue is something that we do mostly in the summer. This is something that you must do year round, being the most winningest man in the world. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say that word before the end of this kitchen chat winningest. without. That will be your word from now on. It will be. You'll, be. you'll say it on anything. All right, fine. But then I don't wanna take your word away from you, but I'll always give you I will credit. always let you use my word. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. So my question is, is that you do this all year round. Do you go to like, Florida and the people take you or ask you to come to all over the world. Back in the day before, now we got so much other stuff going on with the restaurants. We're doing uh, appearances and things like that. We got a lot of stuff. Uh, we build our own line of smokers. I'm up in Connecticut where we build those a lot. So you're building your own smokers. We better, we've been doing that since uh, 2010. We build big commercial units as also consumer models for the backyard. Uh, don't do any grills or anything, but we do just the smoker sides of it. We have some pretty exciting smokers. I knew you were, we were in the Well, oh, I know, I've seen at, them. We were looking at the Lynx products that we have here in the uh, back of the showroom, and uh, Myron was admiring, admiring those as well. So here in the Viking showroom, we have, also Viking has their line of grills. You talked about those before. But as far as your products, now you're talking about for the commercial use and residential. Right, residential and commercial use. And uh, the smokers go up big enough to cook whole hogs in them and stuff. They're over 200 pounders. Uh, I got two of those big units that sit on my trailer that I take the Memphis made for the World Championship. They'll hold 1,000 pounds of meat each, but we cook two whole hogs on each one of them. 
So I just have a basic question because I'm not a chef like Jamie. I'm not a the winningest man <laughs> in barbecue like you. Say that four times real fast. Man. So what is the difference, one, between grilling, barbecue, smoking? How does all of this work? What for me, I for me, and you know, a lot of times people that just grill and all the thing they have is a grill. You got people that's got smokers kind of want to look down on them and, you know, that ain't really barbecue. Well, it is for me. For me, barbecue is the headliner. It's the, it's the title. And below that, you got your chapters. One of the chapters is smoking. Mm -hmm. One of the chapters is over here is grilling. So it actually is grilling is part of barbecuing. Smoking is part of barbecuing. Right. It's just different heat temps, and you're getting a different result with different types of meat. Do your flavors change, and do you have a favorite flavor that you're using now? Born in South Georgia, South Georgia or Georgia barbecue, me growing up was like Carolina. It was all vinegar based, cooked with oak and hickory woods. Uh, it was direct heat, burn the coals down, firing them. That's my favorite. But that ain't a favorite across the country. And, and you got to get something to be more uniform and something that everybody loves. It's something like we talked about with the hog sauce. Which I love. It's got the ketchup base, a little sweetness to it. And that's what really resonates with most people across this country as far as barbecue is. I got to tell you guys about this hog sauce really quickly. Right now you can get it. First of all, I think it needs to be nationwide so people can get it readily. But if you really want to try something great, there's a secret ingredient here that we talked about. It's vanilla in his hog sauce. And if you go to MyronMixon.com, that's where you can buy the products. I got to tell you, between the hot sauce and this delicious rub, I mean... I'm sure this isn't just for meat, because I could think of a million things. Oh, you can do a lot of veggies and everything. You can do a lot of things with it. Right. I love the fact that you, with the rub itself, first it comes at you with this sweetness, and then it leaves you with this really nice level of heat. Um, how consistent are these rubs across the, you know, I mean, it's a, is it a mixture that you do that you yes. blend really well? You got to blend it really well, and they're very consistent. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, we used to make all of our rubs and stuff in-house till it got to where... We were getting so big, and also you had to keep it spanning in your kitchen, and a USDA certified kitchen is very, very expensive. So we, then we started having it co-packed, and we went to several different co-packers, worked with them, and finally picked the one we wanted to go with, and then you stay about another six weeks making sure they got your blends right. right. Plus you periodically have to go and sample and make sure the samples are staying where they need to be. Right, so when you, when you buy these sauces on his website, believe me when I tell you, you're gonna go home and you're gonna try this stuff and you're gonna wanna really put it on everything. I thought about a million different things you could use it for, but I mean, on the pork, that I had today, it was really super delicious. So your spices, is this, how many do you have in the line? We've got uh, six, uh, six sauces. Okay. I've got the hog sauce, I got our tangy sweet, which is a fruit-based barbecue sauce I came up with eight years ago. It's got smooth orange marmalade in it. Yeah. Doesn't have the rind. And our, the first sauce, of course, being from South Georgia, we talked about the vinegar barbecue sauce. Then I got just a regular hickory barbecue sauce. We've got a uh, sweet heat mustard. Yum. And also we have a uh, white sauce. So no. you've been you've been doing this. How when did the the sauces come out and the spices come out? How I started my you? internet store 2005. Okay. 2005, 2007 in that area right there is when I first started my internet store. Never put these uh, sauces and rubs in anybody else's store. That was what I was telling you about. My oldest son David is starting to get out and put them in some other stores wholesaling. They got to be brick and mortar, not just an internet store. You know how many, so many folks, they'll just have an internet store. I got one of those, so I don't want somebody competing with me on the internet. But they got a good brick and mortar store that's doing the hearth and patio and the smokers and putting in rubs and sauces and things like that. Uh, we'll take a look at them and might put it in the store. So if you got a store, you do a good job, check with us. We might, we might let you sell our stuff. I'd like to just step back into the past. Um, as you both know, I grew up in the South and mm -hmm. I love that you're from Southern Georgia. How did you begin your culinary career of becoming a pit master? Who inspired you and I was how telling, did it happen? I was telling Jamie about that. My dad, Jack Mixon, and that's one of our, that's what the name of my cook team is. Is one of my, there you go, Jack's Old South. It's named after my dad, Jack Mixon. And, um, he had to take out barbecue business, and from the age of nine, he got me, and my brother, he's younger than me, so he was younger, he used us as free labor. You know, we felt like he was abusing us, making us work, but we were learning. 
we were learning things. We I were learning, and, and not reusing the term again, we were learning life lessons. We learned not only how to cook barbecue, but we learned responsibility. We learned how to do things. You learned how to work hard. Yeah, you learned how to work. I 11 employees. I was one of them. I was the number eight. Yeah. I punched in every morning. You understand what I'm saying. And I mean, you learn things. Whether I went and chose that field to go into and wanted to be a barbecue guy, I mean, he told me how to how to finish and complete things. You didn't walk away from something, especially right. cooking meats and stuff. You don't just like, well, I'm tired of doing this today. I'm going to leave that pit of meat and, let and leave. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I learned. And as I got older, I got better at it. And uh, when the time came, I felt like I wanted to go compete. You know, in 1996, I took the tools and stuff he gave me and built on that. And, and here I am today sitting with y'all. Yeah, and he was incredible. telling me earlier in the kitchen when we were cooking together, which, by the way, thank you so much for being in our Viking kitchen. He's a family man, and he's passing the torch to his children, and everybody's involved in the company. Oh, yes. Right? Even the girls. Oh, yes. Yep, so they're in the shipping department. Right. Uh, the everything right now. Uh, Who's counting the money? <laughs> My wife is, because she's the one who wants I know. the Viking range. Yeah. Myron was telling me that his wife is really after a Viking range. She loves the product, and we're going to make sure that we, um, we somehow, some way get that to her. I'm not telling you this because we're sitting here, but she has got some that go back. Five years, the uh, brochures on the coffee table packed up on her southern living and oh really oh yeah okay so wow. this is this is I'll be sitting over serious. there watching the Western Challenge. She'll kind of like stick it in front of my eye every <laughs> now and then. So she's like one for you, one for the Viking <laughs> That's ring. exactly right. One for you, two for the Viking ring. That's right. And then one for shoes and one for whatever. Aww. That's and right. So that'll be a great place to cook some of these wonderful awesome. recipes or awesome. barbecue awesome. rules. Let's talk about, let's yes, talk about let's barbecue do. rules. First of all, you know, in every cookbook, I'm sure, like I've only written one in my great life. But, uh, you look really handsome <laughs> yes. on the cover. You look really great, by the way. You look like a real... Like, Best hair and barbecue. I love that. Best the sunshade. So. It's like a real badass on that cover. So what's your favorite recipe in the book and which is the one that you that you are most proud of? Is there is besides all of them? Yeah, all of them, but probably the whole hog. The whole, the whole hog. hog. The whole hog is what we won four world championships with, cooking a whole different way than what we're doing in here because this is old school. This is going back and cooking on replicas. I got replicas of my dad's masonry pits in my compound where we teach classes. And that whole recipe, every recipe in the book was done there. Wow. And we cooked them all there. And uh, the hog is the hardest thing, in my opinion, to cook and make sure it's perfect all over. Making sure the shoulder's perfect, the hams are perfect, loins, tenderloins, because you've got different sizes in there. As you sure. know, the tenderloin is like this, ham's like this. And to make sure they're all cooked perfect, it's a hard challenge. Yeah. And when you complete that challenge and it is perfect, it's a, a, feel, a feeling of accomplishment. You've, sure. you've done something. So right. the hog out of the recipes would be my favorite. Wow, and what about side dishes? Do you have any side dishes? Look in there, I'll tell you what, let's talk about a dessert. Go in there yeah, and look so at the dessert, look, at, look at the blackberry <laughs> cobbler in there. Okay, let's find this. And dessert. we got a pile of blackberry bushes at my house. Really? Pile of them. Oh, this is great. Is that under extras? Whole trout. Wow, trout. look at this. Margaret, <laughs> deep, Margaret picked up the book. We're, we're gonna go through every recipe except for the Sorry, I get distracted. She gets a little distracted. So while Margaret looks south, at that, the birds. Um, I have a couple of questions mm -hmm. for you about like beginners. There's a lot of people out there that love barbecue, that love smoke, but it's one thing to own a barbecue and there's one thing to like cook on your barbecue grill. But like if you are really wanting to get started, what do you think you need the most? One thing you need the most, and I, and I contradict a lot of people on, on this, you know, where everybody says, well, you need to get something cheap and start your way up. You know, I don't agree with that. I mean, uh, I feel like if you're going to do this, and I feel like everybody wants to, is to go in, I ain't just talking about bust the bank, but buy a good quality product. Get a good grill, get a good smoker, like right. Viking. Right. Get one, make sure, and, and the next thing you do once you purchase that, learn how to use it. Right. So and you're talking about yes. you're talking about learning how to control the temperatures. And sure, using sure. And the thing is, people get intimidated. One thing about barbecue and grilling, smoking, whatever you want to call it, people get intimidated because it's fire and it's heat. That's where the intimidation comes from. Well, they need to understand probably the first thing everybody tries is chicken. Chicken don't cost a lot. I'm not saying it's, it's the cheapest thing, but it doesn't cost a lot. So when you're practicing your chicken, if you burn it up, don't sit there and like, you know, it's the end of the world, your hair's on fire, that kind of thing. Throw it away, go back and execute your recipe correctly the next time. 
You, yeah, yeah. you got to yeah. repeat and got to you got to make yourself better at. I, I, it. I, I, you I was wondering about your opinion on that's it. in my grandma's. Uh, oh, that's a great picture. In her uh, pot right there, we used to cook it in the house. It's blackberries cooked on the smoker, blackberry cobbler. What? Wow! And you cook it on the smoke. I, on the smoker. How do you do that? It's magic. <laughs> That's, that's magic. That's a, that's the name of his next cookbook. Magic. Magic. Myron's Barbecue magic. magic. <laughs> so getting back to the cooking process, yes. I find that when people light their grills, they get them to like ridiculous temperatures. Exactly right? right. They think because it's barbecue and because it's fire, it has to be super hot. I think that they should understand that it doesn't have to be super hot all the time. Well, the fire, yes, I do. In fire management, and I'm just going to talk to you about stick burners. You know smokers that runs on stick wood. If I want to cook at 250 degrees, and I tell everybody in my class this, all I want to do is put enough fuel, which is the stick wood, or if you're using charcoal or whatever you're using, to get it to 250 degrees mm -hmm. with all the dampers open. In other words, I'm running a clean fire. Right. Running a clean fire. Don't go over there, throw enough of sticks of wood, it kicks over to 400 and you got to <laughs> shut all the dampers down to get it back to 250. Then you run a sooty fire and the reason they're doing that so they can go sit on their ass and drink more beer and not have to fire it as often. I'm telling the truth. That's the fire but the thing is, and I tell them, if y'all are that lazy that you don't want to get up and walk over there when you need to and put a <laughs> stick of wood on it to keep it at 250 with the vents all open, you need to get either a gas range right. or get a pellet cooker or let somebody else cook it for you. I, I agree with that. That would be deal. You know, if if you need it. to drink a beer that bad, you need to go with AA. Right. So that's the real side Margaret, dish. did you get that tip? I, I, did. <laughs> I got that Well, tip. I ain't going to AA either because I ain't no quitter. <laughs> but it sounds like beer is the side dish for barbecue then. It is. Every, and the blackberry cobbler. Right, just, blackberry so you, cobbler. just so you know, during every kitchen chat, I try feverishly to let or make Margaret grab her pearls. Like I'll usually say something, so feel free to like make her like, huh? <laughs> That's when Margaret. Oh, you've done it. Oh, I've done it. Usually, or or it, the guest makes her do it sometimes too. Yeah. She'll be like, "Oh, my star!" She grabs her pearls. So that's he's, an accomplishment. He's tattoos and yeah. I'm pearls. That's right. She tries to. She's on that end. Like I'm the salt and pepper. She's the sugar. You're in between. <laughs> or a barbecue rub. So all right. Maybe he will. He will be the barbecue rub. Yes, absolutely. I feel like a brisket sandwich right now. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm the brisket yell right on top. She almost did it. She almost did it. She almost did it. Oh my goodness. We'll, get there. well, speaking of ribs. This is just, it's exquisite and delicious. And, and thank you for teaching me how, that was a great tip, how to properly eat a rib. And we'll make sure that's um, included too. But I love the taste memories of the South and how you're honoring your dad in this journey. Well, that's what and, this book's about. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I've done a lot of things and, and my life revolves around barbecue. I make my living around everything barbecue from selling the cookbooks, from competing to the restaurants, uh, to selling smokers and building smokers, to appearances, uh, you know, the TV shows, all this stuff, it, it revolves around barbecue, and not many people are that lucky to make a living off doing what they love. Right. But it all goes back to this right here, to my dad. If he hadn't have made me, went out there, and at nine years of age, I'd rather, I'm telling you, I'd rather been, even when I got to be a teenager, I'd rather been doing something else. But he made me learn that. And after I got out of my teens, I got away from it a little bit, but I didn't forget how to do it. Right. You know, he, I done learned it. And, you know, I didn't know I learned it, but I learned it. And uh, when I got back on the, the path of Q, uh, all of it just fell into place. Well, I'm sure if your dad was here, we talked about your dad passing earlier, but I'm sure if he was here, and knowing that you were the winningest man in the world, I did it, I said it. You, you said, said it, it. Said yay. It. He'd be, it was him, it was him, he made me do it. Um, he'd be very proud of you. I, I would like to think so. Yeah, he would be very, oh, you're a big, you're a big food star when it comes to barbecue. Yes. Everybody knows who you are, you've got a tremendous following. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm really proud for him, for you. You've done an amazing job with, Thank this, you. with this culinary yes. life. And it's not always easy as a chef. And I have a question for you, for somebody that um, we're both like uh, getting up there in life, and for somebody just starting out, somebody that may be watching this, that maybe you're or we're inspiring through Kitchen Chat, for somebody just starting out and going into the culinary field, I like to always ask the chef, you know, it's not always so glamorous. You know, it's not, the road is not, is not so easy. You are preaching to, you're right. You know? <laughs> you got everybody out there, and you know what I'm talking about, chef. They go in, and even the barbecue too. I, I, 
How many of them say, I want my own TV show. I'm going to go in there and I'm going through culinary school in 18 months or whatever, and I'm going to be on TV. They don't think about being on the line for 15 years at the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia and all these things. And I have so many folks, Myron, I want to do what you've done in barbecue. I said, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. But what they mean is, is I want the end result. They want to be you now. They exactly. don't want to go back and do what you had to do to get to where you are today. Well, what I like to say, and it's exactly what you're doing. Literally, Michael. Like, yeah, you have to, you know, you have to be able to, <laughs> hey, listen, guys, you have to be able to walk on the coals and know what that feels like in order to be in the light. Of exactly the right. And, and the thing is, we live in a uh, world now, not knocking kids is because, I mean, it's just the uh, environment they're around. <laughs> That's, well, there you go. <laughs> she clutched her pearls. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is, it's, it's a I want it now mentality. Yeah. I want it right now. I don't want to go and cook with my dad at age nine and learn all that and go through blood, sweat, and tears to get where I want what you got now. Right. And I don't want to do all that other stuff. Right. Well, if you think about social media and the way the speed of technology gives them that, gives them the answer so fast, gives them the video so fast. In this case, what we're talking about, and it's something that you can't just get what you got. No. You know, you got to earn no, it. No, no, no. You got to earn it. Kind of like barbecue. It has to cook for a while. The skill that Jamie's got, you're yes. not going to learn by getting on and doing a uh, website blast all the time and doing cool moves. You got to put your hands on the meat or on the veggie or whatever you're doing and cook. Right. And right. a lot of them don't want to do that. Put your hands on the meat and cook. Yes. That's exactly Great right. Advice. So. I love that. I love that you understand that clearly. You understand that you're passing that advice down to your kids because you got to do the work in, in life. And I feel like I certainly know what those coals feel like. And believe me, I've been on one too many tour buses in my life. Um, but those are the roads that I've traveled on and have brought me to places like today where I get and talk to great people like yourself. But would you well. change your trip? You Absolutely me neither. not. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change my trip. Mm -hmm. No. And it's never too late to get into the trip. I mean, I am on a midlife culinary journey honoring my late father. Who awesome. Was a wonderful home awesome. chef. So, so talking to that one yes. person that's out there, um, you, you would tell them clearly from our conversation that you got to do the work. you got to do the work. And I can tell you something else. Whatever your dream is and whatever your goal is, and I'm talking to those in food because that's what I know about, and especially barbecue, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Because when I was out winning barbecue contests, and I was winning, I won a lot of money. I won 100 grand a year. I was living off of what I won. And that sounds all cool and everything, but the thing is, I knew as hard as I was working for those 10 years when I was really on the road, they had to be an end game. There was something, I didn't know what it was, but I knew there was an end game to it. But I had so many folks that were negative to me about, you need to get a real job, you need to quit this. Don't give up on your dream. You gotta work it, you gotta work that dream just like you do anything else to make it all happen. But, Perfectly yes, said. Absolutely. And I would love to ask you about who the pit master was, is that inspired you the most? Of course, my dad yes. would be that, but I always say this my dad inspired me the most as far as giving me the, the tools to be able to do what I do today. But the man, and he's still living. He's from uh, Murfreesboro, Illinois. He is the other half of the Mike Mills story. When Mike Mills and then was cooking, everybody's familiar with who Mike Mills yes. is of Apple City Barbecue. And uh, they were three-time barbecue world champions. And from Illinois is uh, Pat Burke. And he's still a good friend of mine, uh, salt of the earth, and the man knows how to cook. Wow. He's a great barbecue. And he's, uh, my dad taught me how to cook but Pat Burke, because he won everything you could ever win, he was the man to beat when I started, and I used to chase him. Because you don't get better, you know, beating folks you know you can compete against and win. He was the man. But he taught me how to be a champion, how to carry yourself, be humble with what you do, and strive to be better. Wow. He's a good man. I got to tell you, Margaret, when she heard that you were going to be in town and she was able to do a kitchen chat with you, and I understand you've already done a kitchen chat with Margaret, she told me, she said, you are absolutely going to love this man. He is so awesome. He loves what he does, and he's going to um, motivate you to be, you know. Thank he, you so he, much. And you want to know something? I, um, I have to say you were right. You, well, you are as smooth as your accent. Um, so great uh, to be with today, and I can't say 
that I had a bad time. You are an amazing person. Oh, and so I love so you. Much. I love I love your journey and I love your trip. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. Myron Glad to be here with Nixon, you. The winningest man in barbecue. The winningest. <laughs> he is the it. winningest man. You in barbecue. got it. I got to start taking y'all around with me. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you check out his cookbook, Barbecue Rules, and all of his great products. We'll make sure we have the link on Kitchen Chat. But thank you, dear foodie friends, for joining me on this midlife culinary journey. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day. I always like to end the show with tips from the guest chef. Let's see what Myron Mixon has to say about his top tips for the home grillers. One thing, especially if you're going to do some grilling, if you're doing steaks, if you're going to do chicken, uh, chops, anything, always apply oil to it. You know, put oil on the outside. A couple of things that does for you, like olive oil, or if you like peanut oil, whatever you like. I try to stay away from peanut oil. Sometimes people are allergic, but whatever kind of oil you want. I take my chops or whatever it would be, oil it, then I apply my rub. A couple of things it does, it helps the rub adhere to the meat. Okay. Next thing it's gonna do, because it is oil and you got that hot flame or hot heat coming up for your grill, it's gonna sear. It's gonna give it a better char to it than it would if it didn't have the oil to it. So you got a better char and it helps that rub stick or your seasoning stick to the meat better. Fire management. Whenever you run, even if you're running a gas uh, grill or if you're running uh, the pellet grills, whatever it is out there, always be consistent with the heat. Set your temperature, pick the temp you want to cook at, research it like everybody else does, go by the recipe, most of them tell you the temp, set it on there and watch your fire, make sure you maintain the correct heat. Don't have it spiking and dropping and spiking and dropping. Always run a consistent heat. Okay, now what is the best tip for eating the rib? Best tip is to take <laughs> Both of your index fingers and thumb, okay. pick it up like this and bite. Okay. You well, we'll that? try this tip out. <laughs> <laughs> and check out Barbecue Rules with Myron Mixon, the winningest man in barbecue. And we'll have some more fun on Kitchen Chat soon. Savor the day.